Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again our heart is full and grateful. We're grateful for your goodness. We're grateful for you, what you've done so far. We are a people that you have helped. Lord, thank you. Thank you for families. Thank you for health. Thank you for newborns. Thank you for marriages. Thank you for engagement. There's so much to be grateful for. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. Please, you can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, that was such a powerful time of worship. You know, that's such a powerful time. Of, and I've never even heard that lead worship before. You know, but that was really powerful. I, I just stepped into an atmosphere. That was really powerful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you for all you always do. You know, where's Darlington? Anytime they call Darlington, he's always somewhere else. We have to pray for him so I can sit. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Where, where are the musicians? Come, 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 come. All of you come. All the musicians come. They are wonderful people. Praise God. Come, all the musicians. Always. Because all of you see the singers, but you never see the musicians. You know, some of them are single, some of them are married. This one is single. This one is single. Huh? Si are you single, single, or single? Look, look at how he's sweating, you know, after beating the drums. Single. 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 What? Not single. Double. Yeah. Don't single or double. Double. Exactly. So just exactly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we have international audience watching, so, you know, you can get a lot of invitations from, uh, you know, praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. <coughs> you have to pray for my voice. You have to pray for my voice. So that next level, we have next level and have conference. Amen. That looked like Digi, but it's not Digi, actually. You know, all right. You know, praise the Lord. Whoa. All right. So we're going to get into teaching today. I particularly love, so all of you that are in the first service, there's something you should know. The first service this year is taking a different turn. And the reason why it's taking a different turn is that we're doing specific teaching that relates to the lives of people. So let me tell you what I struggled with in church. One of the things I struggled with in church is that as soon as I had great pastors that could teach the word of God. But as soon as he started teaching, 10 or 15 minutes, I was talking about the church, and the guy next to me was snoring so loud. And I was like, is it that people don't like the teaching? I don't think so. But I think there was a gap between the teaching and what they could use every day. Yeah, and I tried to do that in all of our services, but I think in the fourth service, I want to make it sharper. And that's why this month, so I'm, I'm only giving the background. So all of you that feel as if that's not the kind of teaching that will be, then first, second, third service is a great service to attend. You know, but all of you that feel as if, because we're going to go through different areas of life and just go one. So this month, this year, I have six topics for the fourth service. So the first one is that I'm talking about in the first month, direction, you know, getting direction, you know, and all of that. The second month, I will be talking about how to translate your goals into reality. Yeah, because that's where a lot of people, you know, and I will suggest to you for you to have a notebook. I will suggest to you for you to attend the service with a friend. So that after the service, you guys can go back and work on the things. Because almost every week, you will have not homework, you will have life work. You will have the opportunity to work on your own life. 
and design the life you want. There are two ways people live. People live intentionally or unintentionally. So for example, I can tell you what I will be by the end of this year. The reason why is that it's my life. With the grace of God, I'm the pilot. When a pilot takes a plane, he doesn't think maybe I will arrive in Ghana. No. He knows exactly where we we'll arrive. You are the pilot. Take the plane of your life and determine where you want to arrive. How do you do that? You set your course. You set your course. Praise God. So I'm just giving the orientation because some of you are new to this service. Some of you are not new to this service so that you can determine how, you know, you would, you would interact. And if this is not the service you want, you want the family service where it's, you know, a bit different and, you know, then the first second, the, se the first service is a lot of prayers also. The second and the first service can be what you prefer. Glory to God. Yeah, but the reason why I'm doing this is this. Let me tell you the reason why I'm doing this. I really think that a lot of Christians get into trouble because that wisdom that comes from the word of God is not simply passes on to the word of God, but you teach the word of God, but there's a wisdom that comes from the word of God because it's left to be put to the side. They don't really get it. They don't really get it like that. So in this service, it's really broken now. Amen. Hallelujah. So in this series, it, the, so I'm talking about how to get clarity. So one of the things I began to talk about is this. Let's just read from the Bible as lay foundation. Let's lay the foundation quickly. Mark chapter 8, about clarity. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring him a man unto him, and besought him to touch the man. And he took the man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his face, he put that, that up. Did you remember what I said? Hey man, you have to read the Bible well though. Because many of you think of Jesus Christ as a guy that had regular methods. He had irregular methods. The Bible says he went, oh. I'm sorry, I know that was awful. And he spat, not on his hand though, in his face. He made saliva and spat on his face. I think I should start showing that right now. <laughs> the Bible says, he spat into his eyes and put his hands on them and he asked him and said, if he saw hurt. The Bible says, and he looked up and said, I see. Correct. But the problem is this. I see men as true. That means that my vision is not distinct. I see men as trees. He said, I see. But I see men. And this is the problem of clarity. Some of you, when we teach about clarity, it's not as if you don't see. But you see men as trees. So it's not as if you don't have vision. I, I need another board. It's not as if you don't have vision, but your vision is not very clear. So let me ask you some questions. Can you tell me some of the goals you have for this year? You don't have to be perfect. We can, in fact, if you tell me the wrong thing, it's a good opportunity for me to help you through it so that I can help you polish it. Yeah. Can you tell me? Because some of you, you need to realize that it's not as if you don't have an idea of what's your, your future. But nobody gets to an idea. People get to a destination. That's a snapping hand moment. Nobody gets to an idea. People get to what? A destination. Are there areas of your life where you should set your goals? Let me give you some areas. Number one, health. I know that most of you are young, so you don't think health is a goal. But this is the best time to buy the future. Because, so number one, health. So you want to get some direction when it comes to your health. Number two, spirituality. Your spiritual life. Number three, family and relationships. Number four, finances. 
Number five, social. Number six, what have I not mentioned? Finance, business and career. Business, business or career. So, areas to set your goals. So, let me get a microphone. So, tell me where you've set those goals so that we can take it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you have an area, just raise up your right hands. Let's, let's, let's speak. Just raise up your right hands. Let's speak here. Yeah. yeah. There's a lady here. There's a lady here. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. So, for my finances this year, I wrote that I wanted to start earning millions because i've been earning hundreds of thousands so this year i want to start earning in millions millions yes. hmm. continue continue i want something to write Hope, okay. hope you have it so that's for my finances okay for my you want to be that earning what millions yes so for my health i hold on let's stop let's start with this millions <laughs> what is millions okay so the for me the highest i've earned you see my problem now I ask about the future, you go to the past. What is million? Okay. The reason why is that whatever you cannot articulate and see, you cannot, you don't get to an idea, you get to what? A destination. Is this an idea or a destination? An idea. An idea. This is an idea. There's nothing called millions. What's, what's millions? Five million is a destination. In accounting books, you don't see millions. You know why people have not specific their goals? A lot of reasons. Number one, some people are not trained. Some people are afraid. What's the point of setting a goal you're afraid of? Don't you know the goal will eat you up? You're afraid of the goal. So that tells you that maybe you should step back. And ask yourself, maybe, why am I afraid? Why am I afraid of the goal? So you want to think about that again. Yeah, think about what millions means. Okay, let's get some other example. Yeah. Today will be very powerful. Just watch. Yeah. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. Um, my interest is the health. Health? Yeah. Okay, what's your health goal? So, I, I've not been doing... I used to do a lot of checkups. Every what's your health goal? Health goal? To be healthy physically and also emotionally. So, how do you measure physical health? Work, working out. Working out. Yes, working out. Taking a walk in the morning to my walk to my dad. That's not a health goal. That's a health activity. Okay. Yeah. A health goal is this. I want my blood pressure to be at this level. That's a health goal. A health goal is this. I, I want my body size to be 20 kg. That's a health goal. A health goal is this. I want my cholesterol level to be at this size. That's a health goal. Working out. You can work out and not be healthy. Because that's a health activity. Great. Did you see why the Bible says the man saw and he saw men as trees? It's powerful. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Give to the other lady. The son at the back. The, the son should go to the back. No, no, no. Don't worry. Truman, you're there. Give to the other lady. Yeah. Thank you. Good and all morning. of you that have children, ask your children, set goals. You'll be surprised. I have kids. My kids are not old, old kids. But I ask them to set goals. The reason why is that the more they said they're going to achieve it, the more confident they become. So goals are like, what do you want to help in your school this week? Or oh, I plan to help two people. Yes, tell me. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon, everyone. Yes, my spiritual goal for this year is to study um, two passage, two chapters of Bible every day. Okay. Um, to fast at least once a week. Okay. And also doing at least two days vigil in a week. Wow. That's my spiritual goal for this. Year. That's good. Can I ask a question? Why do you want to do all of that? 
the reason why I want to do uh, all of this spiritual goal is that I want to know God the more. Okay. Yes. So when you know God the more, what will happen to you? I want to be a better me. Yes. What does that mean? Like um, the things I used to do. I don't. I don't want. I want to know God the more. Hold so on. As to Hold on. You said something my... you want to run away from. There are things you used to do that you want to stop doing. Yes or no? Yes. Good. I will put my goal as that. Okay. And put all these other things as spiritual activity spiritual to get there. Yes. Because if you were still smoking, you can be doing vision and be a smoker. Yes or no? Yes. So, the first problem you see with goals is this. People confuse the goals equal to what? The activities. This is getting interesting. Three people have answered. Nobody has told us what, what a goal is. Let's take the microphone. Back. At the back. There's one at the back. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, I'm a filmmaker. And wow. um, I have this intense desire and passion to make uh, a successful um, film career. And then hold one on. of the challenges hold on. that I've hold, hold on. They get on the camera. Why are you looking at me? Why are you not looking at him? Yeah, because it took him some time to get there, so I thought you'll have gotten there. Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord once again. Yeah. So, um, one of the arms that I am into in filmmaking is animation. So what's the goal? The goal is to um, create a successful animation industry in Nigeria. And then um, my plan is to... Your goal is to create an industry. Yes, a successful animation industry in Nigeria, which for now is not... No, no, that, that's fine. When you yes. succeed, what would it look like? Well, it will create fulfillment. And um, how do I describe fulfillment? Fulfillment. You look fulfilled already. <laughs> well, um. You're unfulfilled right now. No, I'm, I, I won't say I'm fulfilled yet, sir. Okay, but you'll be fulfilled when you create this industry. When, when the industry is a successful one, in which where the industry is working. What does it mean, working? when we can successfully sell out our content to the world. But some people sell out their content right now. Well, with regards to animation, not yet, sir. We have not got no, no, to that No, no, to the limit of your own knowledge. The reason why is that, I hear, I, why do you want to achieve this? Let me go to, the, why do you want to achieve this? Why do you personally want to achieve this? It is, do you want me to answer, sir? Oh, sure. Um, apart from the fact that this is a, an intense desire for me, personally, I also find out that I can be a problem solver and I can be a pathfinder. In what that does this regard. mean? Service. Service what does and this value. Mean? Okay, for instance, uh, I, I, I have a challenge. I need to create an animation project this year. I plan on doing two, but I realize that I don't even have enough hands to be able to pull this off. I can teach animation, I can teach filmmaking, but I don't have people to teach. So when I come up with this idea that if I come to church today, the fifth um, um, service where youths are... Did you see how he's just going around, going around, going around, going around, going around, going around? My brother, you know what you want to do? After the service, go and watch it on YouTube and listen to yourself. The reason why is that when you listen to yourself sometimes, you'll be like, oh wow, is that why it sounded? Let me give you a powerful tool. Writing helps you be more clear. That's why if you're close to me, the amount of notebooks I write on, the reason why I don't think in my head, I think on paper. Because you'll be surprised how the idea is great in your head. Write it down. becomes a problem. Thank you, my brother. But you need clarity. Because I don't know what you want to achieve. Yeah. Wow. There's a brother there. Yeah, just behind you. Um, 
you, it's a good time to begin to write now. All of you online, write yours in the comment section. In fact, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to tax our team so that we can have those online, if they can give them a Zoom session so that I can be looking at you, you can write. You know what I'm saying? So, if you don't have clarity, how do you pray? It's a major thing. You pray about things that don't exist. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'll do it just because I'm, uh, I'm prompted and I'm learning to um, follow your prompting. To follow my prompting. Fantastic. Um, I'm learning to follow my prompting. Um, health wise, I want to be under a hundred kg. Okay, that's fine. So I'll put your health goal at 99. 99 works. Yeah, because the reason why is that the more specific your goal is, the better. I have the size I must be this year. And my fasting is helping. Yeah. So, I, you know, so you want to be 99. Fantastic. Can I answer the second question? Do you have a scale? I do. At home? Yes. When last did you use it? This morning. Great. How far away are you from 99? 7 kg. 7 kg. Great. Because he has the goal, he has the measure, and he checks it. Good. Next one. Spiritually, I want to be consistent in participating in at least one Bible study every week. Okay. The goal, I want to be able to minister to men, to my peers, to... See, the reason why I ask, the way activity is, you will get tired with time. So that Bible study, when you don't do it, what do you miss? Nothing. There's nothing, when you don't have, there's nothing you miss. That's why when you don't come to church, do you miss it? You don't miss it. You even save Uber money. You save yourself offering money. You know, say, why am I even bothering and saying? Because the reason why is that there's no goal in mind that by going to church every Sunday, I will end up here. Ask me what I'm doing for you. Why I'm doing this service is that I know if you can have clarity, you can walk faster to your goals. If you walk faster to your goals, asking for prayer will reduce. So, this is answer prayer in advance. I'm just programming myself so that I don't be bothering. Father, Pastor, I don't have house rent. I don't have. No, I can solve other problem now. So, he says, so the day he misses the Bible study, he understands I will not become that minister except I do the Bible study. Because there's a goal. That's great. You want us to go deeper? No. <laughs> because I want to ask you one more question. Go ahead, sir. Why do you want to be why do you want to minister to men? And this is a question I've never brought up before. Why? I feel I've had a burning desire to be in the presence of God. And um, life has brought me full circle. Um, I am doing a 21-day fast. Why do you want to be to men? I believe it's a fulfillment of my purpose by God on earth. Why do you want to minister to men? The reason why is this. I've heard what he said. Pastor George Con. I wanted to learn the... This is the reason why you never achieve your goals. Because you're not consistent. But why are you not consistent? The reason why is this. This is your goal. This is your goal. Your why is what makes you push. Once you don't have a why, you will get tired. Your why is the drive of your goals. So, when I have a goal, I always write beside it why I want to do it. You know why? Because I'm going to get tired one day. But when I tell myself the why, so for example, <coughs> every morning I get up quite early. And then every time I don't want to get up early, I say, I tell myself, I get up early to hold, to win my day. Because that's the way I win my day. I'm able to pray, plan, strategize. So I get up. But if I don't know why I get up, I'm like, maybe it's four o'clock. Uh, let me move to five. Then I can move to six. 
Why? Yeah. So me. anybody that doesn't have a why, yeah. I was just going to say, give me some time to think of the why. I, 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's great. It's great because it, it's good. It, when you think of the why, it will push you. The why is what gives you the driving power. Why do I teach like this? I will tell you why I teach like this. I really have come across Christians that have been disappointed with God. It's almost as if I feel as if I caused it for them. And they had all this high expectation of Christianity and church and Bible. And they did their best in prayer, fasting, and things did not work out well. And they said God failed them. But as a human being, when I look, God did not fail you now. So, I'm trying to fill in the gaps, both spiritual gaps and what? Natural gaps. That's why I do this. Why am I doing this? So that number one, we can have a lower rate. Number one, so that we can, number one, the name of God will not be blasphemed. Number two, so that we can have a lower rate of all those drop-offs. And number three, so that the Christians that listen can actually see their goals achieved and their life will be so glorious, unbelievers can follow them. The why is so clear. Yeah. And you know what? Someone says, why do you give microphone to people? The reason why is that you don't change mindset by teaching alone. Talk. Let me see what's in your mind. So that's why I encourage you to talk because as you talk, I can see what is in your mind and I can help move it away. It's only in church people teach and don't ask for questions. And I church people here and don't believe. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor George. Thank you. Let, let's move to someone else. My brother, you did so well. Thank you. Okay. Please, let me just jump. We will come back. Yeah, let, let's go back to the word of God. So the Bible says in verse 24, And they looked up and said, I see men as trees working. So he actually had an idea. So a lot of you today now, you have an idea. It's great you have an idea. But that's not a goal. You, you're not seeing clearly. Please, can you write somewhere on your book, on your phone, do I see clearly? And rate yourself on the level of sight. And if you have over six, stand on your feet. And once you stand, you give me the authorization to call you to answer my questions. Right. And if the Bible says, as far as your eyes can see, you mean in this whole church, just one, two, three, is what's going to happen to them? In this whole church. One, two, three, four. That is all the people that can say, that scripture that says, as far as my eyes can see, I receive it. Then do you think that God is not answering your prayers. He is. Maybe your vision is very confusing. You can have your seats. So see what the Bible says. He looked and said, I, I see men as trees working. Then when he says, I see men as trees working, what did Jesus Christ do? Come, 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 come. My brother, come, come. Why are you looking back? I'm kind of looking at you. Come. He says, I see men as trees. He says, I see men as trees. So, he sees men as trees. What did Jesus Christ do? Jesus Christ put his hands again. Jesus Christ says, I, you need a second touch. So, all of you have some kind of foggy vision, foggy idea. God says, take it back for a second touch. This is where prayer comes in. Prayer helps you see Father. So, what I do is that, so he has some ideas, he has some concept. But I take this concept to God and say, shed more light on this. This is a connection between the natural and the supernatural. Lord, thank you. And, and the reason I'm saying so is this. The way spiritual guidance come, it doesn't come like this book. Like, if it, no, no, no. Spiritual, Isaiah, let's read Isaiah quickly. Let me give you Isaiah. <coughs> Praise God. Isaiah chapter 28. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Because we're talking about clarity right now. Verse 10. See, see, see what God said here. He says, for precepts must be upon what? Pre now, 
The Bible here is describing how God speaks. And you'll be surprised you're going to find an answer to your problem now. He says, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So what does God say? God says, when I talk to you, it's not as if I dump everything on you at once. This is the key word. Revelation is progressive. Yes. That's the key word. Revelation is what? Progressive. So he says, here yeah, a little, there a little. What does that mean? So, you meet this girl. And you find all this attraction to her. Next thing, you date her. Because in your mind, anytime you're attracted to a girl, it's for dating or marriage. After one year, you break up with her. You guys become sworn enemies. Two years time, she becomes a director in where you get jobs. Meanwhile, God did not send that for you to date her. The attraction you felt was because she was a strategic partner in your future. And God was trying to connect you today for tomorrow. But because you only saw here a little, you didn't see there. You thought every attraction is dating. You have dated her and now she hates you. As soon as she you're completed, you just said, X, never. You now say they're attacking you. But the reason why you felt, but the question that, did you feel something initially? You actually felt something. Did you understand what you felt? You just jumped ahead. See what it says. He says, here a little, there a little. How many of you have thought that I did something before I heard God? Me, in reality, I just jumped ahead of God. Because you just hear, do entrepreneurship. For example, there's a meeting they wanted to have. God said, do this meeting. So I just put dates. Bam! But the thing was now not aligning. <sighs> but I said, no, 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 no. no. It was not aligning. I said, but I've prayed. And God says, do this. So I went to talk to a friend of mine. Another minister of the gospel. I said, he said and did God tell you when to do it? I said, no. Did you fix it yourself? That's the problem. He said, why not fix it on this other? I said, oh, wow. I didn't even see it that way. I thought as soon as God said do it, it was meant to be done now. Let me give you some, some, some things. So, I wanted to notice some about God's guidance. It comes a little. God's guidance is progressive. That's where I'm going. God's guidance is what? Progress. Let me give an example. Let me show you the progressive. God told Abraham, leave where you are. He didn't know where he was going to. He just said, leave what? He said, to a land that I will what? Show you. That means as you are going, I will be showing you more. He says, as you are going, I will be what? Showing you more. I'm just showing that revelation is what? Progressive. The Bible says they were going to go to Macedonia and the Spirit forbade them. He told them, don't go to Macedonia, but he didn't tell them where to go to. But in another place, he now told them they should go into another place. They were going to go to Bethania, I think. He said, you should go to another place. The major problem is that Christians run with half instructions and jump. Be an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean start right now. Be an entrepreneur can be the end state of what God is saying to you. Maybe right now, what you have to do is to start with training. But all of you just jump and say, be an entrepreneur. Glory to God. Let me talk about clear, how God gives you clarity through prayer. So God says, here a little, here a little. So where's, where's my painter? Come. Move your board here. Move your board here. Bring it, bring it cl closer, closer. Thank you. You can put it right there. Thank you. This is how God gives you clarity. When, when, when God wants to give you clarity, number one, it doesn't come at once. It comes in bits and pieces. It doesn't make sense. So what happens is this. When God wants to give you clarity, the first thing you notice is that you become restless. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Restlessness is the sign of transition that you are about to bet something. That's why a pregnant woman, that's what the Bible says, as soon as Zion travailed, what does it mean travail? As soon as Zion went into the state of restlessness, she gave birth. So, what you will notice is this. 
This is what happens to single guys when they get married. They just feel as if, ah, I don't want to be alone again. No. I feel very lonely. All the single book cannot relate. It's only my people that can relate. Is it not true? Pastor Jerry, is it not true? Taiwan, is it not true? You get to that phase. All the single people, you know why you cannot relate? Because you are not at that phase yet. Once you are at that phase, you know marriage is knocking. Because it's a transition. The same thing with the younger girls. You just start asking questions like, when are we going to get married? Because there's a restlessness that I don't want boyfriend and girlfriend again. I want something more sustainable. But the same way it happens in relationship, it also happens in business. It also happens in business. You just look at the store or your office and be like, no, man, I can't be doing one million per month. What is this chicken change for? But this one million was a big testimony to you just a year ago. There was a time in my life I thought if we bought this building, it would be the biggest miracle in our life. Right now, I'm like, oh, why did we even agree to buy this tiny place? And the reason why I feel that way is that the transition has occurred. And guess what happens? I want to show you something. You know, as God begins to talk to you, hold on, sir. Hold on, Mr. Painter. I want you to watch something. This is God talking. It begins to say sign. Does it make sense? No. God, see, when God begins to talk to you, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's like you seeing his glory. You have to take it back to God for processing. But this is the power of prayer. Prayer provides clarity. That's why people that don't pray can't see far. People that don't pray suffer from spiritual short-sightedness. The ability to see far is, within, is taken for them. In the place, the prayer is a place of seeing. Let me tell you, you can do Gen Z, but don't do it with prayer. You should know when Gen Z ends and stop. You should know when all this funkiness ends and stop. When it comes to prayer, you become authentic. The reason why is that a man that prays is a man that sees. Don't be the man walking around seeing men as trees. What is men as trees? Distorted vision. A distorted vision will lead to a distorted life. Glory to God. So, what's the first thing? When you begin to pray for direction, God, you become restless. And as you go, why you become restless? Because God is sending all these signals. All these things, sending signals. But look, this thing doesn't make sense. God is sending signals to your spirit. God knows what he's saying. You just don't understand what he's saying. The second thing that you begin to have urges. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. But the urge is not certain that that's the will of God for you. What do you do when you have the urges? Once you begin to pray, the urges begin to turn to direction. And all of these things, all of these things are things that are happening. All of these things are happening in the place of prayer. And as you're praying, there's more signs and more things happening in your spirit. It still doesn't make sense. Just let God keep. This is why we pray for a long time because Sometimes we receive a signal. It doesn't make sense. We'll pray some more. More signal come. It doesn't make sense. We'll pray some more. More signals come. But the signal begins to what? Compound. Let me show you what the Bible says. How the Bible? 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Look at him and say, don't jump ahead of destiny. 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Look at what the Bible says. 2 Peter. He says, we have a more short. It's on the screen now. Let's shoot together. I want to go. We have a more short of prophecy. Where until you do what when you take it. What does he say? It describes what prophecy is. He said, as a light that does what? Let us read together. I want to go. As a light that does what? Watch this now. He says, the light shines in darkness. Then it helps us understand that the light grows. He says, he shines and shines until the day dawns. You know when the day dawns, there's no more darkness. That's what I'm going to. In clarity, there's still darkness, but once the day dawn, everything become very clear. The Bible says, and the day star will arise in your heart. So, when you have clarity, there's no darkness again because the light has done. But how does it happen? It happens gradually. Gradually. So, all the time, I'm making the decision. And that's why all of you, especially all of you that are young, that want to make immigration decisions, marriage decisions, don't pray one day, two days and say you've done it. Those are decisions you pray for months. Why is it important to pray for months? Why do we fast for three weeks? The first week first, we paralyze our emotion. Your prayer has never gone anywhere. You are just dealing with yourself. 
Because there's a way you want to say this uh, uh, Canada, Pago, Shaga, Pa, Ka, Para, Shadi. Uh, uh. But then we start fasting now. God will help demobilize that Canada. You may need to go back to Canada, but he will remove it and say, Leave this my way. Ah, Richard, hey, he must marry me. Ma, Shaga, Waga, Rama, Shaga, Richard, must marry me. Yaga, Yaga, Yaga. You have not gotten to the will of God. In the will of God, God will paralyze Richard first. <laughs> Praise God. Why? Once you are in your own jail, God cannot put you on jail. You must, you must come to neutral first. So the first week of prayer is entry neutral. What is neutral? Not my will. Yours be done. And God, look at that. Look at that. God keeps on walking. It's still walking. But the second week is entering some dimension. It's entering some dimension. It says, it says the light will begin to dawn in darkness until the day dawns. And, it, and what? And the day star arises in your heart. Learn to process your decisions in prayer. Learn to process guidance in prayer. What does that mean? Lord, this is what I heard. Tell me more about this. And it will begin to look, it will begin to look, are you done? And it looks this confusing. Because this is what God is telling you. But the, the artist that is giving you signal Holy Ghost knows what he's giving you. Let him interpret it for you. Interpret it. Oh, you didn't see that before? Because to you, you didn't know what was working. This, the problem is that, this is the problem. My brother, oh yeah, come and paint. Paint some more. Just get any paint now. Give me a word. Touch anywhere. Just touch anyway. As he's painting, you say, no, don't paint that place. You paint this place. Some of you be telling the Holy Ghost where to paint. He said, no, 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 don't paint. My brother, do you understand the canvas? Do you know what he wants to paint? So, your career, you will hold him. My brother, come again. He said, no, 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 Holy Ghost. Hold him. He said, Holy Ghost wants to paint. He said, don't paint here. Paint here. Holy Ghost said, leave my hand. He said, no, Holy Ghost, paint here. No, no, no. This marriage, this guy, want, I want to paint him. No paint. You, you are holding his hand. Only goes to say, since you can paint, take brush, paint. Okay, they have given you brush now. Can you paint? Some of you that cannot paint will not paint and make a mess of everything. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh Lord, I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. You know why? Because for you to allow God paint, it takes a lot of trust. Do you know? Do you know that when he was painting this? A lot of you did not know what was going on. But as soon as they interpreted it, they're like, oh my God. That's what prayer does. Because in the place of prayer, and this is why you're fasting. You need to know why you're fasting. You need to, let me tell you something. There's a place of fasting. When you are asking a fasting for children, move to a higher level, seeking. Seeking is clarity. It's fellowship. It's seeking. 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 It's another higher dimension. Live asking. Move to seeking. Move to seeking. Let me see, Lord. Illumination. Let me see, Lord. Seeking. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let me swipe. Change the boards. I, I can give this to someone, right? Okay, I'll give it to someone later. Let me take the board. Or you can just give me the pen. You can leave the board. So let me close. Why do people have confusion? Number one, conflict of vision. 
Conflict of what? I want to marry a pastor, but also be a slave mama. I want easy life, but I want to be very rich. Many of you know that's a conflict of vision. Like, you know, like a conflict of vision. Because this life that you wake up at 10, sleep at f- sleep anytime. I want to be very successful. How will the money come? Easy life. Conflict of vision. Most hardworking people work more than eight hours in a day. day. I, I want to be very spiritual, but also very clubbish. So, I, I'll be in church. Oh, but in the club also, I want to be. It's a conflict of vision. You have two, This is what leads to confusion. You have two visions that are pulling you in what? Two different directions. A lot of you have known me for a long time here. I can bet that not up to 1% of people here have ever seen me in a party before in my life. When I say party, not club party. I even mean birthday, wedding. I don't go anywhere. I carry oil. Oily people don't go everywhere. They need to preserve oil. So, when you see pastors that attend every party, you can tell that the oil level will come low. It's not that I'm fighting them, but it just shows they have no regard for what they carry. Hey, we are there, they are smoking, they are just, they, it's all dancing, you know, and you are carrying oil. Ah, no, 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 no. Some things don't go with oily people. When you see, you don't, some things don't go with oily people. First of all, where do I have time to go on Saturday when I'm preaching on Sunday? Sunday is Mayagaba, Shobalagaya. Tomorrow is coming. Fire from heaven. Shabara, Lagaba. It, that is all that is on my mind on a Saturday. Oh, like, ah, Saturday, what will I wear? Hey, ah, it's rock, ah, rock wear in the spirit. Every responsible pastor knows that Saturday is a fire day. So, the, so I'm only giving you my own personal example. I'm not saying that be a pastor, if that's not your calling. But I'm only saying that is your vision. Do you have to? So the confusion is that there's a vision you have that pulls you to the right. There's a vision that you have that, and you know, you know the thing. Every vision comes with association. So you have friends that pull you what to the right, and you have friends that pull you what to the left. So that's why you always seem confused. What a revelation. Who can identify? Who? So you need to ask yourself, which vision would die for which vision? Because for one vision to be achieved, another vision must die. The confusion is a function of contrary visions. I've told you spiritual things. Let's apply to natural things. I want to enjoy my life, but I want to have a great financial future. Every great financial future has when you pay the price for it. When are you going to pay the price for your own? It's a simple term. Play now, pay later. Pay later, play now. You have to choose. You play now and you pay later. And you pay now and you play later. The point is that you want to have a good pay in the future. And you want to have a good pay now. Ah. Ah. As long as the edge remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So if this is your seed time, your harvest is in the future. If it's your harvest time, your seed is in the future. such powerful truth in a very simple way. Praise God. 
let's, let's, let me close. This is already powerful enough. Holy Ghost has spoken to people. This is one of the prayers you're going to pray is that Lord, show me where to make adjustments. Coconut head must not destroy my destiny. Coconut head means stubbornness. It must not what? Destroy my destiny. Pay now and play later. Okay, let's get some feedback. How this has connected to you. Who is who has two visions that is con do you, do you want to share your story? My sister with a scarf. You want to share? Yeah, give her the microphone. And be honest, don't bother about anybody, just be honest. Then sister Zakiki will tell me what she has taken today. Yeah. Were you blessed? Yes, yes tell me. Hello, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, I'm one person that has uh, issues with discipline. Discipline. So, that first night when I came to church, I told God that I'm going to work on my relationship with you so that you can help me work on other areas. Normally, I wouldn't last maybe like three days during the fasting, but I've disciplined myself. Let me tell you, I've cut off a lot of people I love. Like, I let go a lot of things that is hurting me, but I know that I am not an ordinary person. Hmm. So you are paying now. I told God, yeah. I am not going to downplay the things that you have put on the inside of me. Wow. I want to ask you a question. What made this end of the year a change for you? Why not last year? Why not two years ago? Or is this how you begin every, every year? No. So, what made it different for you? I came from a family where it's rare to see people who are great. Wow. I have prayed my way out. I don't think I want to downplay the things that God has put on the inside of me. And I know that the path that I'm going, if I continue that way, I won't be able to manifest anything useful. Wow. But, but that path is enjoyable. It well, is. Eh? Trust me, it is. I should trust you. I am the life of the party. It is. Oh my God. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm the life of the party. It is. But don't worry. You will become the tail of the party. Oh, yes. Because life of the parties don't last. They move from life to become stories of the party. Yes. Stories people talk about at the party. So that she doesn't become that story. She's saying that, let me live the life. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Sister Zagiki, say something. Just beside you, Chuma. Yeah. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, in fact, not this service. I've had a lot, of, you know, that I've gained from this service, but actually from the third service. Okay. I was at the smaller hall there. Auditorium. And we were talking about people who... Just take we your time. We're talking about people who have seen God walked. And because some things happened, they got to where like they started questioning God and I cried <laughs> throughout the message in that place okay so I have actually seen miracles mm. with my eyes and God has done has, has showed himself you know yeah. real miracles and he has I've had encounters and I know that God is with me. But um, for some years, there were things that I've been praying about for. And it seems like God is not hearing. And, and I'm going to give you a background. Because in the third service, the message is a bit different. And I spoke about this is why we pray. And one of the things prayer does is that it affects your heart. And I said, because life happens and we go through life, 
life will just change you. And, and I get the example of when I was in boarding school. In my year one, we had all these wicked seniors. And they crushed a lot of my year one people. GS1 in the secondary school. But guess what I noticed? By the time we got to SS3, all the GS1 students that were my mates, that were beaten and said, I will never do this, they had also become wicked seniors. What happened to them? As they went through the wickedness and the toughness of the school, it changed who they were. And, and one of the things I was saying in the earlier service is this. And you can go back and watch this on YouTube. When you go through life, life has a way of changing who you are. And one of the reasons why we pray is that the place of prayer is a place of surgery. It's a place of exfoliation. And say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I'm back here again. Because I don't like the person I've become. I want to be another person. And if you're going to be a strong Christian, that's going to be in your mind somewhere. The truth is that I mean, even have some ideas of what she's talking about. But sometimes as a pastor, I don't have all the answers. But what I've learned is just to keep on trusting. And just keep trusting because there's no other way than to trust and obey. And Sister Zakiki, first of all, I want to salute your faith because I could never have seen it. But you and your husband, I could never... I could have thought about it. I could have prayed for you personally, which I do. But I could never have seen it. And it's amazing because I believe that God is just doing something in your soul and in your heart. And bringing hope. And that's why all of this is coming out. Because God doesn't want it. This is the biggest thing about having this kind of heavy heart. You will enter this year with a heavy heart at the fresh season. How do you think the year will turn out? A heavy heart in a new year. And let me tell you, you can be like, oh, she's older, she has, you know, let me tell you something. There are some of you here that are 25, that your heart is, is 105. Because your heart is heavy. Because of all the things you've been through. Th thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, okay, let me, let me get one more here. That, that's so, if, I, if you didn't raise up your hand, I was going to close. But I'm going to just, you know, let you speak because that... that that impacted me in a very special way. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Pastor B. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, church. So for me, I have a weakness, which is procrastination. Yeah. And I've come to identify that where my, for my goals and for me to, for, in order for me to achieve my goals and visions, I have to let that vision go. They can't work together because procrastination is a very comforting place. You have tasks you need to achieve and you're like, oh, I'll just do so it. So for you to achieve, so you have to choose between success and comfort. Yes. So before now, you've been choosing comfort. Yes. But now you're going to choose what? Success. Yes. And success means what? Discomfort. Discomfort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I hope you pick someone that can help ask you every day, have you discomforted yourself today? Him. Yes. Ask her every day. Hey, tell me what, you've, what has pained you today. Oh, I have to wake up at five. Pained. And you know the thing? The same way you get used to comfort, you can get used to discomfort. And when you get to discomfort, it becomes comforting. Praise God. When I was younger in my life, I never ate salad, all those kind of things. I didn't even used to like fish. Literally, all my meals right now are fish. Because I think of my future. Praise God. Can we pray?